Hello everyone, as promised, um, today I'm going to show you how to get ZTFTP server online so you can access it over the internet, complete with a properly signed SSL certificate. So uh, let's get started. Okay, I assume that you have downloaded ZTFTP server and installed it and started the configuration wizard. If you haven't, you need to start doing that now. Uh, use the, the link below the video. Now, when you get to this page, how will the server be used? You want to click on a public server that's accessible from the internet and click next. At this point, it will tell you you need a domain name and either a static IP address or a dynamic DNS service. Now, I'm assuming that you're installing this on a home machine and that your IP address may change at any time. So in that case, you should go for the dynamic DNS service. Let's click on this link here. This is the the dynamic DNS service that I recommend, Dynu, uh, you can get a free domain name off them and they don't have annoying restrictions like having to log in every 30 days or they'll delete your domain. So this is the one I, I recommend. Create an account here and log into it. And then from there, you click on the DDNS services and create your domain there. And then you want to set up your router. If you can, you want to set up your router to keep this IP address that it points to updated to point to your network. Unfortunately for me, my router, its dynamic DNS feature is very limited. So that's not an option. If that happens to you, then click on DDNS setup and Dino and you can download a client to install on your computer. And just one caveat there, if you are using a VPN to access the internet, then you will have to set it up so that this client can bypass your VPN. Otherwise, it'll update to use your VPN endpoint IP address, which is not usable for servers. Now let's head back to ZTFTP and move on. At this point, you will choose your encryption security level. Just leave it at the recommended level that provides good security and good compatibility with FTP clients. So this will create the private key. And then at this point, you want to enter your newly created domain name. So you enter that here, enter in all the other details. And once you've entered all the details in, you click generate to create a certificate signing request. Now, this signing request, you need to download a copy and give to your certificate authority. I recommend zero SSL. So this one will give you a free 90 day certificate that you can renew again and again. Create your account here. Once again, log in. I've already done this, but I'll, I'll show you the basics of how it's done. You log in, you create a new certificate for the domain that you want to create a certificate for. And at this point, there's something very, very important that needs to be done. Ah, uh, yes, you want to click the 90 day certificate, the one year one you have to pay extra for. Do not auto generate CSR. What this does is this means that they will create a private key and everything for you. And you should never give anybody, including your certificate authority, your private key, because anybody with that private key can spoof your website and make people, fool people into thinking that they're visiting your website when they're visiting theirs. So you paste your certificate signing request in here, click on the next step. Yeah, you select the, the free option, go to the next step. They will ask you for a method of verification. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated because we don't have the Acme client built into ZTFTP yet. It will be coming at some point in the future. Easiest option is to click the DNS option and then you want to copy and paste these details into your Dino. So over here you click on manage the DNS records for the host name. And then you want to create a new DNS record, a C name DNS record. First, you copy this section, copy that, paste it over. You want to be making a C name record, and you're going to point it to this address. So you paste it in here, and you create, click on add DNS record. 
and that will add it to your DNS zone. And then here you can go and say, okay, I've done that. Click the verify domain button. And it says, congratulations, your domain has been verified. What they're doing is they're checking, do you really own the domain that you are trying to make a certificate for? So that's done. And then from there, you will be able to download your certificate as a zip file. And then once you've downloaded it, I won't download this one just yet. You can click next and upload it into Zeta FTP, upload the certificate and the certificate authority bundle. And I click install. And so from here, you would just set up F the Zeta FTP as you normally would. Let's just go through this as quickly as possible. I do not need to add another user, I think. So that's fine, done. I will add the usual FTP root directory, done. Yes, leave the logging at def default. Use the standard ports for the UI. And then at this point, it will tell me how I can access my server. Now there is one more thing that needs to be done. You need to switch back to the web browser. You need to log into your router and forward the ports. So features, port forwarding, either forward the ports or, or create a virtual server. The exact way of how to do this depends very much on your router. So you'll have to look at your router's settings. So anyway, the ports to forward are listed down here. If you want the administration area accessible, then you need to forward the HTTP ports. Otherwise, it's port 21 for FTP and the data connection ports. So you go in here. I'll add the FTP one. I won't bother showing the other ones for this video because it's all, all the same. Connect it to your own computer, the one that you're installing it on, port 21 apply. There you go. Now the FTP port is done. I have to repeat this for the data ports. And then once all that is done, my FTP server will be accessible via the internet. Okay. Now that we have the port forwarding set up and saved, let's see if we can access it via the internet. I have enabled a VPN so that a I can make it look like I'm accessing Zeta FTP from across the internet rather than from within the network. Enter the details in, quick connect. You may still get a certificate warning because Zeta F, sorry, zero SSL's uh, root certificate seems to be fairly new and not all programs recognize it. And there we go, we're in. We are logged in. There are no files on the FTP server yet because I only just set it up, but either way, it's in, I can access it easily by the internet from anywhere in the world. Now I do have plans to make this process even easier, but for now this is how it's done. So I hope you enjoy your internet accessible FTP server, and I also hope that CTFTP server will serve you well.